It is a Tuesday with Thompson. Pete Thompson joins us. Uh, he's brought to you by Charlie's in Summers Point. Thompson comes in here wearing shorts. You know, she's got a blanket on up to her nose. Pete's got shorts on when he comes in here. PT! <laughs> Hello, MG. Yeah, usually I'm, uh, I am run hot. You know that. Uh, by the way, Charlie's now serving breakfast on Sundays. Did you know that? I yeah, like breakfast. that. You can go in there and get pancakes or a burrito, and, and they say that Ray, the bartender, makes the blessed Bloody Marys around. So, you know, if you need your a little wake-me-up with your eggs and bacon, by all means, get in there and have at it. I was at a godson's baptism on Sunday, and at the Mass, the priest said the most popular meal of the day is breakfast. So there you go. Breakfast on Sunday makes sense at Charlie's. I like it. Yes, and uh, Jeff Thomas and those guys over there know that I'm on via phone today, but I'm going to be with you all four hours on Thursday as we start talking Flyers hockey and stuff. The Phillies lineup's out tonight, by the way. I don't know if you've gone through it. with uh, I listened to you with Frank Close on the way up. Uh, don't see a lot of changes other than the fact that Howard is in the lineup and Ruiz is in the lineup. So Hernandez, Herrera, Franco, Howard, Ruiz, Galvis, Borges, Goodell, and then e. Morton. That's the Phillies lineup. Yikes. Yeah. Uh, sounds like a long day at the <laughs> office uh, for not, the Philly fans. a lot of world beaters in there. Yeah, so yeah. we're up here producing a uh, pregame and a postgame and, and an end game. That's my part. Casey's doing the hard work. He does the pre and the post and the seventh inning hit and all that stuff. Yeah, Pete's up at Comcast today producing uh, for Phillies. Uh, I do want to, you know, obviously, Pete, the Flyers – what an exciting weekend, and we're going to start Thursday night, and that's one of the reasons, again, Pete's going to be here on Thursday to get people excited for this Flyers matchup. But give us a little uh, insight from your mind on the Flyers, what happened over the weekend, because quite frankly, a lot, a lot of people felt pretty good entering the weekend with what they needed to have done. No, and then everything went their way. I mean, my goodness gracious, you know, uh, the way that Boston lost and then Detroit lost too, and by the time the Flyers took the ice, it was like one of those times, remember that Eagles season where, like, everything needed to fall into place and all their starters were getting ready to play, and then by the time they took the field at 4 o'clock, they already knew they were in the playoffs, like the Cowboys had unexpectedly lost or something like I'm sorry, they were playing the Cowboys, but Oakland had beaten Tampa Bay or something crazy like that. You remember that season? That's what it felt like on Saturday where, and then the Flyers, you know, you saw tweets come out early in the day on Saturday that the Penguins had healthy scratches of Latang and Crosby yeah. both weren't going to play, and you thought, my goodness. And then, you know, boy, what Lauren Hart did for Mr. Snyder was so, so touching and so nice that she FaceTimed him so he could hear the roar of the building one more time because he hadn't been in the Wells Fargo Center all year. You know, he hadn't been in there for a single Flyers game all season. So that was really special that she did that for him. Yeah, Pete, and, uh, you know, yesterday was a pretty emotional day for a lot of Flyers fans, and I saw uh, you had a reaction as well. You posted something on your Facebook page. We know uh, that you're a big Flyers fan, but Mr. Snyder's a big reason why you became a big Flyers fan. He sure is. That I mean, most of my interaction with the guy over the years has been I'd have a camera on my shoulder for NBC40 and I'd be waiting in the hallway to go in, or even back in my WRTI days for radio, I'd be waiting in the hallway to go in and interview guys, and he'd come marching down with that stare and that, that look. You, you, you knew right away whether they won or lost the game based on how, how his mood looked when he walked in that hallway. But I never really had a lot of personal interaction with, the, with uh, Ed Snyder until 2010, uh, prior to actually, of all things, it was a Temple Penn State game. And we went up for NBC40 because Jack Crawford was a senior at Penn State at the time. We figured he was going to be drafted. This was our chance to get some sound from him. Got there super, super early, and I walk in, and Lewis Katz, the late, great Lewis Katz, was there kind of holding court. And the guy that he was with turned, and I realized it was Ed Snyder. And I thought, oh, my God. You know, and Katz was off doing stuff. And so it really was just Ed Snyder and I standing there. And I said, uh, Mr. Snyder, you don't know me. My name's Pete Thompson. I'm with NBC40 down the shore. And I said, I just want you to know that I fell in love with hockey at 85 when your team had that great run. I've been a fan ever since. And I just really want to thank you for, for everything you've done for hockey and for Philadelphia and, and for me. And he said, oh, well, thank you for being a part of the family. And I think he really meant it. And, and it was it meant a lot to me. And I, I just thought, no, thank you, sir. I mean, my goodness. Uh, there wouldn't be hockey in Philadelphia without Ed Snyder, that's for sure. Yeah, and uh, he was the only owner that they know that they've known there uh, with the Philadelphia Flyers, and uh, I, I find it it's kind of apropos here at the end where Mr. Snyder was criticized a lot, Pete, for his lack of patience, and here we are at the end of you know the road for him and this team 
has gotten to where they are today based on the patience uh, that they have displayed through Ron Hextall, that basically uh, something that he was uh, sometimes criticized for has put his team in position to really allow him to celebrate towards his last couple of days. Well, it's funny, too. I mean, there's a couple schools of thought. Some people have said that they felt like Ed Snyder held on just to see what was going to happen with this team. And so he kind of held on to see that they made it in the playoffs and then thought, okay, they're in, you know, I, I, I can go now. And then Hexy told a really good story to the media yesterday. I don't know if it was when he was at the podium or if it was later when he was kind of on a one-on-one situation, but he said, Right up until the draft deadline, with a couple hours to go in the NHL trade deadline, his phone rang, and he looked at it, and he saw that it was Mr. Snyder calling, and he thought, oh, boy, here we go. Because for the most part, Ed Snyder had promised when Hextall took over that he wasn't going to meddle, he wasn't going to interfere. And so Hexy answers the phone, and Mr. Snyder says, are we getting better? And and Ron Hextall told him, uh, no, as a matter of fact, we might be taking a step back for the longer haul. And, and the fact that Mr. Snyder wasn't calling him and demanding some sort of a move or anything shows that things had changed, you know, and that he, he was endorsing Ron Hextall's building this team. And, you know, the fact that they're in the playoffs right now, you know, of course, Flyer fans want to see him. You know, you got to get in the dance to win, right? And uh, many times the eight somehow finds a way to upset the one. So never say never. But the fact that they're in now with all the guys that they're going to have coming up next year, the Provorovs of the world, the Travis Konechny's of the world, you know, Samuel Moran, uh, what we saw in a ghost this year, all those guys coming up, uh, the future is really, really bright for the Philadelphia Flyers. Yeah, it's a Tuesday with Thompson. Pete Thompson will be in studio with us for four hours on Thursday. We'll dive more into the Flyers' Capitals series. But, Pete, uh, when the Flyers got in, we knew it was going to be the Capitals. They couldn't be anywhere but the eight. And, uh, you know, when you're, as you just mentioned, in hockey, when you're the eight, it is not ridiculous for the eight to beat the one. I think basketball, you don't see the eight beat the one very often. I think it's only happened two or three times in history. But in hockey, it happens, you know, not very frequently, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. So are the Flyers, you know, uh, playing well enough that would you be stunned at, like uh, Rick DiPietro said the other day, that he would be shocked if the, if the Flyers beat the Capitals? Would it be shocking? Not to me. I mean, they were 2-2 two and two during the regular season, so, I mean, they, they played each other fairly evenly. The difference is is that the, the Capitals are, were so good and so healthy and so deep. They had seven guys that played in all 82 games, and I believe the Flyers had one in Michael Roffel, and that's that's it. You know, now, of course, Shea, uh, Claude Giroux or Wayne Simmons, they could have played in that last game on Sunday night, but why throw people out there in a meaningless game? But the, the point is is that, you know, the, the Capitals have so many weapons, whether it's Ovechkin and his 50 goals or his nets off and his 20 goals or, or probably the Vesna Trophy winner in Holtby, who's just been unbelievable in net. So, I mean, there's just weapon after weapon. I just I wouldn't be shocked if the Flyers were able to beat them. It's going to take a Herculean effort, though. Hey, by the way, while we're talking Flyers, I should tell people that tomorrow on the show – uh, I will talk to Flyers Captain Claude Giroux right here on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN. Claude Giroux tomorrow here on 97.3. Scott Burnside coming up at 4.05. Steve Coates today at 5.05. Pete Thompson in studio for a Thursday with Thompson getting you ready for the Flyers and the Capitals. And, of course, you can hear the entire Flyers Capital series on 97.3 ESPN. Tuesday with Thompson brought to you by Charlie's in Summers Point. I don't want to say the address because I might mess it up. 800 Shore Road. It's at the shore since 44. Often imitated. Never duplicated. Charlie's try their tail tenders or their unbelievable buffalo wings. You know me. I like all the food and the drink at Charlie's. They got fat tire now too, remember. We, we, we were very excited to see that. So, And then with the hockey coming up during all flyers, oh, games, remember they have that one. That's special. So if you want to go for a blue or a, a blue light, you know, have there's a blue light special. Remember the old Kmart slogan? Attention, <laughs> Kmart shoppers. Well, attention, Charlie's drinkers. We've got a blue light special. $2 Labatt's blue cans during all 
Flyers hockey game. So mm-hmm. they're going to have, you know, a couple of years ago, I guess, now it's been 2010 already, but Charlie's always does a nice job, too. If the Flyers get past this first round and they start to make a run, don't be surprised if Charlie's doesn't put out some commemorative rally towels. Yeah. Well, really I'll tell you, I mean, they do it right. Speaking of which, if the Flyers get by this round, they have a very difficult path through the playoffs because they would face either Pittsburgh or New York in that second round. So they've got a very difficult path uh, to get through. However, let's have fun with this, all right? It's been a while. Let's have some fun. we got a Philadelphia team that's back in the playoffs, and I'm highly anticipating Thursday night. You can hear the game right here on 97.3. All right, PT, we're looking forward to uh, the PT being back in studio. We missed you today, man. I had a guy yeah, last night you, I had a guy last <laughs> night uh, tell me, he said, man, you guys just sound like you're having the time of your life in there. I said, are you kidding me? I want to kill him when he's in here. <laughs> well, that's because I bring so much to the table. No, uh, we, we've certainly known each other for a long, long time, and I think that comes across on the radio. And uh, look, I'm the voice of the fan. You know, you're up there on your high horse with your opinion, and I got to just poke a little, take a little air out of your balloon. That's my job. <laughs> All right, uh, I would I, actually. I just thought of a something I want to do on Thursday show uh, with you, so uh, we'll have a little fun with that as well. By the way, we just announced uh, the draft party. Uh, Thursday, we're going to be at Tailgaters for the draft party this year. Someone's going to get a chance to pick, uh, quote-unquote, draft which Eagles road game they want to go to this year. We're going to send someone to an Eagles road game, and a second grand prize winner will get a pair of tickets to an Eagles home game this year. So this is your formal invitation, PT, to the draft party. Uh, We will be at Tailgaters in Galloway that day. Well, I think that's great. I heard you mentioning that you were going to announce it at 305, and I was curious to find out who, who was where was the destination. So that's great. Ari and all the people out of Tailgaters, they'll take real good care of us, and uh, that's also close to where I live. So I'm a big fan of that choice. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, we'll see you on Thursday.